Pastor Axel welcomes you to Evangel World Outreach Center. Our weekly worship services are every Sunday at 12.15 p.m. located at 236 Washington Street, Boonton, New Jersey 07005. We are a small church with a big vision for northern New Jersey. Come be a part of our family. I want to speak today on breaking through to the supernatural. It's week number four, and I think we're going to have another four sermons to go to complete the supernatural. And I know that God's plan for us, if we take that plan, if we walk that plan right, I believe that next year, 2019, we're going to walk in the supernatural. We're going to walk into the way we never had before. See, when you walk in the supernatural, you don't care about your earthly things. You don't care about your life because that all becomes secondary. Because you're so involved in God's ways, in God's understanding, in God's uh, uh, outpouring that you have no interest on the earthly things. And that's where we have arrived. That's where we can say, from there on, we're going to march forward into glory. Hallelujah. Did you know that you were made for miracles? And miracles were made for you. You were made for miracles. And miracles were made for you. You remember God created humanity through the supernatural manifestation of his power. God came to this world and he breathed into Adam. And he intended to deal with his children today the same supernatural way. Amen. You may ask if that is true. And I was made for miracles and God desires to manifest his miracle power in my circumstances. Why haven't I seen the miracles that I need? That's a good question to ask. Amen. Why haven't I seen the miracles that I need? To walk in the supernatural. You have to press through in the spirit and break down every hindrance that stands in your way. And so many times when things happen in our life, what we do? We back off. Nobody likes to fight. But so what happens when we back off? We have to start from the beginning. But we have to do what? We have to press through in the spirit break down every hindrance that stands in our way. Sometimes we have to change things in our life. Sometimes we have to change our mind. Sometimes we just have to declare. Sometimes we just have to get uh, angry about things in our life and don't don't tolerate them. Amen. We tolerate so many things. God has never told us to tolerate things in this world. God told us to be breakthrough. Hallelujah. God tells us to break through in life. God says, let him let his power be manifest in our life that we can see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must know, learn how to break through the supernatural where God's spiritual power can be released in and through you. See, God never only has the interest only in you. God never has only the interest in me. God wants to use you. According to Romans 9, 17, he wants to use you to demonstrate his power in all the world. Hallelujah. He wants to use you to show the fame of God to all the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans, uh, Romans 9, 17, I didn't put it on the, on, in, in, in the, in the notes, but it says Pharaoh. Pharaoh was, this, was to display God's glory. Yet Pharaoh had it done in the wrong way. But God wants to display his glory through you. He wants to display his power through you. He wants to display his anointing to you. He wants to glorify himself through you. Hallelujah. He wants to glorify himself through us. But there's one thing. Number one, we must break through our natural limitations. To our natural limitations. One of the biggest hindrances you will face in when the walk in the supernatural is our own living environment. We have been taught so many times how to think. When you're little, your parents say, you need to be this way and that way. So we create a natural limitation around us, which are our thoughts, our imaginations, our preconceived ideas, your attitudes, your emotions, your circumstances, what you see, hear, and speak. 
So we have created limitations around us because of what we feel, what we see, what we think. And we cannot break through. And it doesn't matter what people belong to, what denomination. Denominations have brought so many limitations on people. Amen. But God wants us to break through the new natural limitations. Unless you are knowledgeable about your environment, there is no possible way you will be able to break through the new natural barriers that hinder you. Unless you change your knowledge, unless you change your knowledge about the environment, you can never break through the supernatural. We must change. Now thank God because we can change like He is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14, it says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. If in the natural, you will never understand, never receive, never comprehend the Spirit, the things of the Spirit of God. For their foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Your natural body will never understand the spiritual aspect of God. You never, your natural body will always cause a limitation of you, a limitation of life that we can never break through. So we are, have a limitation around us unless we break that limitation. He says the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. And we can look at ourselves. Sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks to us. What we do, we ignore we ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the natural body can never comprehend what the Spirit says. Unless we break our limitations that God, if you speak to us, if you speak Holy Spirit, let me listen to what you want me to hear. And the sad thing is the majority of Christians still living in such a way where they are shaped by this nature. Some people, they don't right, they announce, the Holy Spirit in the church. Some people, some denominations, they don't allow the Holy Spirit to work in the supernatural. They quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very sensitive. I have encountered before in church when the cloud of glory came down and it was just hovering around the ceiling. And if the church moves the right direction, it breaks open and the blessing is coming down. But also there can be somebody sneezing or some wrong motion or something done being done wrong and the cloud lifts off again. The cloud of glory, the glory cloud is not something that comes easy. He needs to be worshipped into the place. He needs to be worshipped into the presence. And if we worship right, if we do things right, the cloud breaks over our lives. Hallelujah. And we, do, we, will, not, we will no longer be the same. But the sad thing is most people go through life depending on their own abilities. How many times we think we have to master things. You have a father who sits on the throne on high. His name is the Almighty God. He wants to be your father. He wants to direct you to life. He wants to take you by the hand. He wants to do what he wants to do with your life. So all you need to say is God, here I am, take my hand, lead me through life. I'm not going to master my life. I'll let you master my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's how you can eliminate a lot of problems right there. <laughs> they depend on their own abilities, on their own mind, on their natural mind. Instead of depending on the Almighty God. Does God, does He have limits? No. So why do we put limits in ourselves? The supernatural flow of God's miracle power, which will enable you to accomplish the greater work that Jesus told us we would do, cannot be manifested by our own natural doings. We are limited. We are very limited in our own. We are very limited in our flesh. And if you don't believe me, you start praising God for a while, and your flesh gets exhausted. Pastor Paul says, My spirit is willing. Your spirit is willing. But what happens? The flesh is tired. It's worn out. It's exhausted. Feels sick. And I, feel, I don't feel like praising God. I 
I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading the scripture. I don't feel like, I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's part of the flesh. But we're not living by the flesh. We're living by the power and the mighty God of the Almighty. Is it by the power and the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And as long as we remain bound by the natural, we can never, never encounter the supernatural. The natural, as I said before, was the thoughts, the upbringings, how we feel, the emotion. How many times people get offended? And all of a sudden, friendships are over. What happened? Just because the emotions kicked in? No, we cannot live by the natural. Once you have broken through the supernatural, uh, once you have broken through the natural limitation, you will be able to live in the atmosphere where you can experience the miracles in every area of your life. Once you break through the natural limitations, you will be and can be experiencing the supernatural. Now I'm going to get a little bit deeper. My second point is the environment of spirit, body, and soul. Let's look at the limitations we have. The spirit, the Greek word for spirit literally means breath. The spirit of man is, is, is the quality of life God gave him in creation. Remember when somebody dies, what happens? They have less, less breath and the spirit leaves the body. A dying body, once somebody dies, the spirit can no longer live in the body. Every spirit needs a living body to operate this world. The devil needs a body to operate this world. That's why he gets into people. God needs a body to operate this world. That's why we're the children of God. And so when he breathes into us, life starts. The spirit is alive. God breathed into heaven is a part of a human being whereby we are able to communicate and to worship God. I don't understand that some people in the church they have a hard time calling the Lord. They have a hard time praying. They have a hard time worshiping. You can't sit down on your chair and keep your mouth shut because nothing comes out. So you cannot communicate with the Almighty God because in John 4, 24, it says God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. So something has to come out. But people think, well, I don't know if I pray. I don't know what my neighbor will say. Or if I sing, maybe my voice isn't that good. Who cares what comes out? Amen. It's a personal relationship. It's not a corporate relationship that you have. It's a personal relationship with God. Hallelujah. You may just open your mouth and just fill it. Amen. The Bible says, if you open your mouth, he shall fill your mouth. You may open your mouth on the power of God comes on you and you're going to sing like they have never sung before. You may come under the power of God. The power of God comes on you and you may pray and pray and shake the whole church. Hallelujah. But you have to open up your mouth. Because the mouth is the, is the breath. It's the spirit of God communicating. Paul told believers in the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If we say we're the temple of God, and every Christian that has a relationship with Jesus has become the temple of God. Now some people, they have the temple of God, but they don't allow the Spirit of God to work in their lives. But when we the temple of God or the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, our spirit infuses and powers by the Almighty God gives the ability to supernaturally man. 
See, God's Spirit comes in you because your spirit and he God's Spirit comes in you and he connects with your spirit and you enter the supernatural because you have a connection with the Holy Spirit and that window when your body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, comes right, that's where you become a person where you can experience the supernatural, amen. When Christ comes to live within us by His Spirit, His very life is manifested in us. Amen. Hallelujah. God gave His Spirit into our bodies. We're not our own. The Bible says we're not our own. We're not our own. We cannot do what we want to do. Amen. God gives His Spirit into our bodies. And Jesus Christ gives Himself into our bodies. We have a responsibility and accountability unto the Almighty God, unto the Holy Spirit, unto Jesus Christ, of what we do with our bodies. And when Christ comes in us, we no longer are bound by the sinful nature that we were bound before. The sinful nature no longer has access and can do what it wants to do unless we allow it to work in our lives. We didn't have to live according to the old man with his heart of mind. It's that we enter into a new dimension where we can live according to the spirit within us to break through in the supernatural so that we are living continuously in the life and power of God. We must understand that our spirits are supernaturally empowered by the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 3, 16 it says, I pray that from your glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Pastor Paul was saying, I pray that you, from his glorious unlimited, that supernatural, amen, glorious and unlimited, that supernatural power, hallelujah. That's the resource we need to live by. That's the resource we need to draw from. That's the resource we need to understand. It is ours because we are connected with God by the power of the Holy Spirit. We connect and wash and cleanse by the blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore we have access into the Holy of Holies. Unlimited resources that will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. That's the Spirit. Now let's go to the body. Our body has no great function. Our body is worthless. Our body has no future. Another aspect of our natural environment is the body. We are spiritual beings who dwell in physical bodies. Our body is just made for our for the spiritual to be together in our body. In Galatians 2 20 it says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Can you say hallelujah? Come on, if you, if you understand the word of God. It says, I, my old self has been crucified with Christ. I ought to rejoice that I no longer live the old environment. I no longer, no longer live the old flesh. I no longer live by the calm mind that, uh, that, that was operating in my mind before. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You no longer live like Christ lives in you. Hallelujah. You think Christ has limits? You think Christ is, uh, 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 he is he's not able to do whatever he wants to do? He can do whatever he wants to do and he lives in you. Hallelujah. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God. Who loved and gave himself for me. The whole part of our body is just to live on earth. Our body has no future. Our body will never get to glory. Not this body. The only way the body goes to glory is God's going to give us a glorified body. Amen. He's going to take his old flesh and turn it into everlasting flesh. He turns his old body into a glorious body. A carnal body in, 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 in a perfect body. Hallelujah. So living this 
concerned me about it and trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Our spirit lives by faith in Christ Jesus as we go about our earthly life in this house of flesh and blood. That's all we are, our body is just flesh and blood. Our body that has no control over our thoughts. If our if if mind tells your body you're hurting, guess what? The body says, yes, I'm hurting. The body has no function on its own. Whatever the mind tells the body, that the body will do. And we know we have the mind of Christ, so we can do whatever it needs to be done for God's glory. Now I'm going to come to the soul. See, we know the spirit is the breath. We know the body is just a function of keeping things in order together. But the soul, the soul is the mind, the will, and emotions. We have to rethink. We have to change our mind and will and emotions is whatever directs us. Amen. Your mind tells you what to do. Your emotions is what, be, what makes you behave the way you behave. And the will puts the force into everything. Some people say it's my will, not your will. I do it exactly as I want to do it. Yeah, that's a philosophy that a person can have. But when things go wrong, all of a sudden, what happened to the will that I want to do the way I want to do it? All of a sudden it comes to a stop. The soul is compromised of mind, will, and emotions. Your soul is the mind and the will and your emotions. Our mind processes your thoughts and imaginations. You see something? If you look at these flowers here, you might tell you it's close to Christmas. Because you look at something and it gives you the future of what's coming. Amen. Nobody tells you it's Christmas. But your mind's going to give you imagination. The Greek word used to refer to the mind is what? It knows. And OUS, which describes the mental function of perception, understanding, knowing, feeling, judging, and determining. It gives you the understanding. Your mind tells you it's not possible for the Holy Spirit to work in the supernatural. Or your mind tells you it is possible for the Holy Spirit to work in my life in the supernatural. Your mind needs to be retrained. Your mind needs to be taught. Your mind needs to be trained every day by what? By the Word of God. Because it gives you the perspe perception, it gives you understanding. It gives you knowing if you get in the Word of God, guess what? You're going to know the Word of God and the Word of God can direct you. Amen. You know the feelings. The feeling is part of your mind, will, and emotion. In judging, God has given everybody a supreme court. Amen. Everybody has received the supreme judge. What happens? He has given us a supreme court called conscience. Everybody knows what's right and wrong. But when they, when they play around with the supreme court that God has given them, then what's going to happen? Their conscience will lead them into different directions. When you're born again, our minds are free from the control of the fall nature. Once you receive Christ, your mind no longer is bound by the nature on earth. Now, if you live by the nature of, on, on earth, and you think the earthly way, and you do the earthly way, the supernatural will never come into action. The supernatural will never be able to work through our lives. Our minds are free from the control of the fall nature. We no longer bound by the law. Remember, Jesus, I came to do away with what? With the law. Because he set us on higher grounds. He understands and he tells us that we have, we have words and desires, we have emotions and will. And, 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 and also, when we, when we get free of that fall nature, the earthly nature, then we are no longer in the control of the enemy. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. 
Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new nerd, uh, has become a, a new person. Amen. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. Why do we always go back to the old life? Why are we always being attracted by the old nature? Because the old nature wants to keep us down and back because the, the, the new nature knows that we can march forward into the supernatural. The new nature knows that we can get into something that we've never known before and we never have experienced before. And that's why our nature keeps us back. Because many people don't want to have new things. When it comes to spiritual, I'm comfortable coming to church. I'm comfortable coming, uh, pray once a week or, or sing, worship once a week in church. I'm comfortable. That's our nature. But our nature doesn't take us anywhere. When our nature all of a sudden being stricken by sickness or disease comes on us or something happens to us, what is nature doing? Oh, I'm the good doctor. Oh, I feel so sorry. I feel so bad. And it has a pity party. Why live by the nature of this world? Why don't you live by the heavenly nature that God has given you? He says that whoever belongs to Christ has become a new person. Amen. You no longer have to live and be directed by the old, but you can have a new life that has begun when you see Christ. In Romans 7, 22, 23, for, the, for in my inner being I delight in the law. But I see not the law at work in me. See, we all have the heart that loves God. But we all have the heart that loves things of this world. Because it says here, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin and work within me. That's always a tucking back and forth, tucking back and forth. But the only way you can break the tucking forth is when you surrender to the Lord. When you crucify your flesh, the Bible says, deny yourself daily, daily, and take up the cross and follow him. You need to crucify our, you have to crucify your flesh. Jesus gave you the crucifixion and the, on the cross that he crucified his body once for all. That we can have that environment that we can be set free, amen. But every day we have to say, God, it's not what I want to do. It's not what my mind tells me to do. It's not what I feel in me. I want to serve you. I want to push forward. I want to do what is right unto you. Hallelujah. The mind of the old nature is in direct opposition to the mind of the new nature. The new nature says, I want to worship God. Your old mind says, I don't want to worship God. Uh, the new nature says, I want to go to church. The old nature says, I don't want to go to church. There's a battle. And you are the one that decides who wins. You're the one that decides who will have victory. And you, the one that decides according to the decision you make, is what you encounter. It's where you're going. It's what path you travel on. It's you and I that decides what is our future. Because it is impossible for the old carnal mind to be in submission to God. It is impossible for the old carnal mind to be in submission to God. Our carnal mind can't ever submit to God. It will not say, oh God, whatever you want, I do. Would be nice. But then God would be God. Because God gives a free will. First Corinthians chapter 2, 14 says, The person without a spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. But considers their foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerning only through the Spirit. The person without a spirit does not accept the things that come from God. Because in their mind, see again, the mind says it is impossible. It cannot be. Satan doesn't want us to live according to our new nature and the spirit of God within us. Satan wants to hold us back, not to live by the supernatural. He does not want us to live according to a new nature that God has given us in Jesus Christ. He will do whatever it takes in his power to fill our mind with anxiety, 
with fear, with defeat, with discouragement, with circumstances, until we are weak, depressed, and ready to give up. How many Christians walk away from the path of life? Forsook God. Why? Because the enemy came against them and pounded so long till they were fed up with everything. He will come and show you there's no hope in the midst. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 says we have the mind of Christ. So the next time the devil comes against you, you tell the devil, you don't understand. This is not my mind. This is the mind of Christ. You cannot find the mind of Christ. This is sanctified, holy, ghost, anointed mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And that, that, that mind will direct this body. Not you, but this mind will direct this body. In Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not, con do not be confirmed to the conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable perfect will of God. Hallelujah. So we need to understand we cannot conform to this world where God took us out and put us into a higher ground where God washed us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Why would we go back? We cannot conform to this world. But it says here, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove that you, that I may prove what is the good and acceptable perfect will of God. The renewing of our mind is a continuing process that we have to have in Christ. We can't just read once the Bible and say, oh, that's good for the week. No, we have, to, we have to get involved with God's Word daily. We have to read or see, we are so blessed. We have different translations. You have different apps on the phone. You can listen to the Bible. You can listen to dramatized Bible. You can have, to have somebody speak the Bible. We have no excuse not to listen to the Bible. Or read the Bible. Because we need to fill our mind with God's Word. Because God's Word is the knowledge of Jesus. Amen. If you want the knowledge of Jesus, we have to fill ourselves with the Word of God. Colossians 3, 10 says, But put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Put on what? A new nature. Hallelujah. And be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Jesus wants to become like him. Your mind influences every part of your being. See, if his mind is the mind of Christ, if it's being directed by Christ, it will influence the whole entire body to walk blameless before God. We don't have to sin. We don't have to fall. We don't have to do the things that God doesn't want us to do things. If God is not for us, I don't want to go where he doesn't come with me. If it's for us, then I have to change and do ask myself what is wrong within me because I want God before me. And so we can look, become like Jesus. Our mind influences our behavior, our walk, our understanding, our expression, our emotions. Everything has to do with our mind. In fact, it affects our attitudes and develops. When people say that, Oh, Lord, the sickness is up on me. I pray that I'll get well. What does the mind tell you? Well, it's not going to get well. Your mind will take you into confusion. Your mind will take you down the street where you don't want to travel on. Because your mind will tell you it's never going to work. Your mind will tell you, I'm never going to improve. I'm never going to be well. I'm never going to receive my healing. Never, never, never. The devil is a liar. Amen. If you connect it with Christ, all things become possible. Hallelujah. Your mind doesn't understand. Your mind will testify to the goodness of the Lord as long as you train your mind to be the mind of Christ. You're going to see the supernatural operating in your life. Some people say, I never have money. And they hear. Your ears hear what you say. Your ears hear what they say, and your body will conform to what you say. So we need, we need to tear down the strongholds of unbelief. And the church has experienced God's power in the way God wants to operate because we limit God by our mind. We limit God by our thinking. 
If it's done the right way, if you understand, it cannot be of God. I've learned a long time ago, the way God works, we never understand. The way God works, we never com comprehend. Amen. My wife and I were just talking about this morning about uh, Smith Wigglesworth. He smacked the people. He kicked them in the stomach. He threw them against the wall. And people were healed. Because he said he had to get the devil out of the person. Sometimes they would be angry, very, very, very uh, uh, stern with the certain things. Amen. You cannot be the nice person you want to be all the time. When it comes to the spiritual, you tell the devil where to go. He's the only place he has on their feet. We need to tear down the strongholds of unbelief. Hallelujah. See, the environment we created over the years, where we have been brought up, where we understood, where we learned, where we heard, all these have to come, all this comes together and gets where? In our mind. And so our mind can hold effect on the supernatural. We need to take dominion and authority over the words you speak. And I speak. We need to take dominion. Amen. We need to take dominion. If somebody tells us, oh, you never amount to anything, you tell them, oh, you haven't seen anything yet. You're going to see the power of God manifest in this body. Hallelujah. When you don't see things the way they ought to go, you tell them what you want to see, and you just say, turn. Don't be like a wave, don't be like a ship that's tossed to, to and fro from the wave. But you stand firm and you say, I know that I call the name of the Lord, and I'm going to see, I'm going to see the power of God being manifest in my life. Rethink your life. Don't give up. Don't give in. God has given you the, uh, the understanding, the ability to walk and rise to the supernatural. It's important to understand that what we hear goes straight up in the air. What we see goes straight up in the air. Be careful what you see. Be careful what you hear. The Bible says you can have, you can have a wonderful upbringing. You can have the best character. If you surround yourself with the wrong people, they will destroy you. I know when you listen to the news, they can, the news can destroy you. So if it destroys you, don't listen to the news. The worlds are going to turn, amen. The worlds are going to turn, no matter what. Limit yourself of what goes into yours. And if you hear something new, wrong, you reject it. Because your mind is the mind of Christ. Let Christ operate in you the way you want to operate. Next week we're going to understand how we do how we develop a spiritual eyesight. So the, today was a mind, amen. Next week we're going to see how to see the spiritual. How to walk and understand what the eyes have of the spirit. Hallelujah. See, God gives us information. If we take that information we use for God's glory, then He's going to manifest Himself in our lives. The manifestation of God's supernatural will come when we change. We cannot hope or wish for the supernatural. We have to change it to press into what God has for us. What God has for you to push in and press into, amen. Because it's not going to just come all of a sudden because we wish or we desire. No, it takes work. It takes work. It takes, it takes work. But once we do the work, hallelujah, it's just going to flow naturally. When people operate the supernatural out there in the world, you think it's just because they desire to work and be the supernatural? No, it takes work. Spend time with the Lord. Spend time in His Word. Spend time worshiping Him. Remember our 28 Tim's resolution? 20 minutes praying, 80 minutes in the Word. 2018, next year's gonna be 20 minutes prayer, 8, 19 minutes in the Word. Anoint yourself daily. 
According to Ecclesiastes 8 9, anoint yourself daily, live a righteous life, and fast. That's a good resolution. You set yourself up for the supernatural. Because sometimes you just get into prayer and you just feel the presence of God so wonderfully. And you just go to, you just start to flow in His presence. But when you pray and you feel His presence, rejoice anyway, amen. Again, our mind is connected to what? Our emotions. We don't pray because we feel good. We pray because we communicate with God. Hallelujah. They try to fly to the Mars, they try to, try to fly to Venus, they try, they try to fly and go to every planet out there. But praise God, we call on the Almighty God. Our prayers bypass all those planets right into the throne of God. Hallelujah. And we can talk to Him. We can talk to Him and make a difference in earth. Let us say it. Let us say it. You know, I want all of us to come to a place where we live in the supernatural. Where we dwell in the supernatural. When the supernatural, you think your body, your body has aches and pains? Yes, they may have aches and pains, but they don't understand the way of the supernatural. But the glory of God, I don't think you have aches and pains in the glory of God, amen. See, I believe we don't have to go out in a sickness, leave this world. I believe we can just go to sleep, fall asleep, and we're going to be in the presence of God. Amen. We didn't have to struggle through life. We didn't have to have diseases in our life. We didn't have the sickness in still life. I declared a long time ago in this church, no disease, no sickness will take us out. Amen. You may just go home and go to bed and have a wonderful night. You're asleep. You close the eyes. The next moment you open your eyes, you can be in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves us. Father, we just praise you. We thank you for allowing us to come into your presence. Understand how to live a supernatural life. Let our mind be transformed and changed daily. Oh God, let our flesh not direct us, but let you, Holy Spirit, direct us. For we your temple. We your dwelling place. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for loving us. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.
phase without action is dead. What you have spoken, you put action. You come to the altar, that's the action. And God will seal it. Hallelujah. I know God has planned for you. I know God is elevating you. God wants to glorify himself in your life. He's not look, he, he never looks for the qualified. We don't qualify for God's kingdom. We don't qualify what God has to store for us. He looks for the, the one that says, Lord, use me. Use me. Look no further, Lord. Here I am. Use me. I'm willing. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to allow you to walk and live in me in the supernatural. Because the supernatural is not for me, it's not for you, it's for the people out there that need to be exposed to God's kingdom. They need to be touched by God's presence. Jesus has with the light and the salt to the world. We are the salt and the light to the world. If you don't shine, if you don't make this world thirsty, because we're the salt, what's our purpose? Being here on earth? to live our lives and make the best out of it. That's the carnal mind. The mind that God has for us is the mind of Christ in you will do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you ask the hope for. Because there's power in you. Amen. Release that power of God in your life. Release the power of God out of your life and you'll be flying out of your As long as breath in my body, I still have a future. As long as I have a future, I pray the power of God to be operating my life. I pray the same for you. As long as you have breath, it doesn't matter how old we are. I know one thing, we're going to finish strong. We're going to finish strong, amen? Are you going to finish strong? Hallelujah. Raise your hands above the Lord. Just talk to him for a few seconds. Let him lay his hand on you. Let the power of the Holy Spirit touch you. Oh, Holy Spirit, speak to our minds. Transform our minds, Lord. Oh, Father, here we are. We came to your place. We came to your house. And we just praise you. Here we are, Lord. Change our minds of Jesus. Enlighten us, Holy Spirit. Show us which way to go. Show us what to do.
you that you have chosen us to serve you. You have chosen us to serve you with power and anointing. Hallelujah. spirit. We have no problem with understanding our body. But most of the time we understand, we have a problem with understanding the mind. So as you go home today, I want to ask you, take an old path and ask the Lord, what need to change in your mind? Because sometimes we know, we know what needs to be changed, but if you write it down, we see it, it's easy to change. Amen. For some, reason or the other, whatever I put on paper, I will accomplish. If I don't put it on paper, I may accomplish, I may not accomplish it. I remember long, a while back when I became pastor of this church and I put things on the paper and it was so overwhelming. I said like, there's no way in my mind, there's no way I would ever accomplish that. And a couple of years ago, I looked back over the same paper that was in the early 2000s, and everything on the paper was done. It was all done. Don't limit God. Ask the Lord, Lord, how can I get to the next level? Show me, show me my mind what I need to get rid of. The friends I have to drop. The surroundings I have to change. The things that have been brought on me by my parents or by the surroundings or job or the nation or whatever the environment I'm living in. Lord, show me what I have to release. Amen. Because nothing is worth holding back God's will in our lives because of the things that surround us. Amen. Father, I just ask you a blessing upon each and every one in this place. I pray that you will open up our mind unto you. Lord, let our mind be cleansed by the precious understanding of the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God. God, I pray that we become hungry for the things of God, hungry for a mighty move, thirsty for righteousness. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for we all changing to be given the change you want us to be. From this day forward, I thank you that every day will be a day of change. Because you're setting us up and you're getting us ready for something great. And I want all of us to experience the greatness of God. And even the ones attached to us, Lord, our families, our families at large, our neighbors, whoever is part of our life, we ask that power of the Holy Spirit to penetrate upon each and every one that's part of our life. We're not going to tell you how you're going to do it because we can never tell you what to do. But we thank you for what you're doing. And God, I thank you that you're going to work in ways we could never comprehend. Now, thank you for touching our families and everybody that's connected to us with the glory and power of the Almighty God. And declare it over this church. Now seal it with the name of Jesus. And then cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ. For your glory, your kingdom purpose. It shall be according to what I have prayed for, Lord. Because I prayed your perfect will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. May his glory not penetrate every area of your life. Amen. Go with God. Expect great mighty things. Amen. Thank you for listening to this week's sermon. Please check our website for church updates and notes on upcoming sermons. Have a blessed week.